All right, everybody, I think I have done it. I have come up with my number one tip that I think that every single DM on earth needs to master, maybe even in the universe. Bad joke, but you, you, you get my point. All right, let's jump into it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society. And this week we are going to be doing more of a talking head DM theory style video because I have spent the last week having a bunch of conversations with friends and they have been those like super deep, meaningful Dungeons and Dragons role-playing game conversations that just make my heart overflow with goodness. And things have come up that have narrowed me down to at least at this moment in time, I can signify what I believe is the number one most important tip that every single DM and GM of tabletop role-playing games needs to master to run a high quality game. And when I say high quality, I'm not talking about stage tricks or even like terrain or any of that stuff. I'm talking about a high quality game this is the number one difference between the games that I have ran and played in that have been mediocre and the games that I have ran and played in that have felt exceptional. And that tip is you need to love your players. I am already ready when I say that to get a whole bunch of like, not hate comments, but attacky comments, but stick with me for this because like I said, I really genuinely believe that I am onto something, maybe not profound here, but something that is really, really, really killer. You need to love your players. And what I mean by that is everything that you do as a GM or DM when you're running the game has to be with the exclusive goal of making them as people excited and happy to be at the table. Now, I'll use video games as an example, right? When you go and play a video game, you're playing a game by yourself. No one ever plays video games by themselves that they hate because they pick games no matter what those types of games are, and they pick games that make their happiness and excitement level go up. I'll use myself as an example. I really, really do not enjoy those like top-down, like tactical RPGs where you have to min-max every single one of your party members to be able to survive these incredibly insane dungeon encounters. I do not in any way enjoy that style of gameplay. So I don't play those kinds of games. And this psychology, I think, plays over intensely into the point that I am making with this video. I am not going to play a video game that I don't enjoy the gameplay style of. So therefore, why would I expect my friends to come sit down at a table and play a game in the style of game that only I enjoy? I think that that concept leads to the players versus DM mentality. A really easy example of this would be if you're running a kill every PC at any chance you get insanely crunchy, be as safe as you possibly can dungeon crawl, and one of your players shows up with a 47 page backstory about their bard who has done all of these things and has existed in the world and wants to make the world come to life and then you kill that player's character in the first session I hear a lot of GM forums and things go well that player should have known better to make a character that backstoried up at first level but that player is not gonna enjoy that experience now that could come down to a conversational issue, right? You should have set up to them, that's not the type of game that I'm going to run. But you see how that starts to create a problem. You're gonna tell them that's not the style of game that I run, so then that player is not gonna make a character that they get their heart all excited about, and then therefore they're not gonna be super excited about that game. It's, it's a cycle that, that, that tumbles down. So what I'm suggesting is, and I'll go back to the original thing that I was saying. Learn how to love your players. Learn what makes them excited. Let's say that I'm playing with John. John 
loves to min-max his characters. He loves to make his paladin the strongest, most ridiculous paladin that's ever been. John wants his paladin at first level to have a 25 AC and be able to just be the most heroic hero who's ever heroed and say no to the bad guys constantly. Let him. I know that seems so anti whatever we hear when other people give GM tips. It's like, oh, don't make min-maxed characters because X, Y, and Z. But that's what makes John's heart jump. So when I run a game for John, what I need to do, my number one tip, is I need to run a game that gives John as many opportunities as I can so that he can make the most paladinian paladin who has ever been a strong paladin. Let him crank all of his stats up to ridiculous numbers. Let him be able to beat things super easily when it's not dramatic, right? Tailor John's table experience to John. For all of you that are still with me, I super appreciate you and hopefully this is engaging and interesting because I am really fired up about it. Uh, so let's move on. So let's go to Matt. Matt as a player absolutely loves writing rich and deep backstories for their characters. Now I'll be honest, putting my heart on the table, that's my favorite type of player. My favorite ones are the ones that show up with ridiculously long backstories. One of my players, um, his backstory was a short story one time. One time it was him writing letters between him and all of his family members. One of them he just did was uh, his wizarding character, uh, he actually did like his report cards from wizarding school that talked about all of the things through that semester that he did well and did wrong in the classes. Like, that's my favorite stuff, right? But for that player, I want to make sure that I give them ample opportunities to expand and enjoy that backstory goodness. And just because... They are playing at the same table as John, who wants a very min-maxy and crunchy experience. I need to make time in the story that we're all telling together so that both John and Matt get to do the things that make them excited and would want to play. And it comes down to, I can't do that if I don't learn how to love making John happy and learn how to love making Matt happy. And I'm not saying this is an easy skill, by the way. This is all kind of an umbrella top-down thought process video, not necessarily an application video. But if you're not taking the time to learn what makes each player in your group tick and makes their heart excited to be there every week, I think that is a recipe that leads to a mediocre game. And I'm going to call up examples of games that I have played in where it's like each individual player takes their turn running a game and everybody kind of dog paddles through their game to get on to the next time they run and then everybody dog paddles through their game. I have just seen that in so many gaming groups that for me as a person, for me as a DM, for me as a player, I just have quantified all of that back down into the DM is not running a game for their players. The DM is running a game and the players are there for it. Yeah, uh, hopefully this video was interesting for all of you. Hopefully this thought was interesting. If you have comments or suggestions or anything to expand on with this, leave them down in the comments below because that's super useful. Oh, 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 I was gonna kick into the outro, but actually I, I had one other thing that I wanted to talk about. One of the conversations that I had Actually, a couple of things. Okay, this video is gonna get cut a little longer. <laughs> so I was talking to Drew. If you don't know who Drew is, check out the channel update video from a while ago. He is the guy doing all the shorts here for the channel. But um, I was talking to him about his game and we ended up making a magic item for one of his players. And that magic item basically allowed that player who was not necessarily the biggest role player in the world to get to now use the things that they love about the game in tandem with the other players that really enjoyed role playing. I find that kind of stuff incredibly fascinating. It's finding a way to love your players that don't like an aspect of the game in that aspect of the game. How do you get somebody who's not a big fan of role play to enjoy role playing moments 
even though they don't necessarily like or want to enjoy role playing. And I don't think the answer to that is that you force them to role play. I think the answer is you find ways to inside of the role play to engage them. And again, restate not the easiest thing in the world to do. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was a conversation that I had with one of my players talking about lore delivery, right? That's a huge conversation in D&D, specifically with DMs and any kind of tabletop game, but where DMs are writing these huge lores and histories for their worlds, and then they struggle to deliver that to their players. I think that this, again, is a problem that comes back to not loving your players, because if you deliver the right information to the right players, one of your players that loves real world history, give them military battles and commanders and politics and that sort of thing. If you've got somebody who loves romance, go at that angle. If you've got a player who wants to min-max everything and be the strongest thing that has ever been, then the lore delivery that you need to give them is these magic items that are the most powerful magic items that the world has ever seen or spells or that sort of thing. Deliver your lore correctly. And you can't do that unless you love your players and learn what makes them jump and be excited and happy and all that stuff. That's the last thing that I have for this video. Please, if you enjoyed it, definitely leave me a like, subscribe to the channel, do all of the YouTube stuff that helps the channel out a bunch. But most importantly in this video, definitely leave comments down below. I want to get a dialogue going about this because I really, really think that as over the top and big this is, I'm really on to something. And I hope that, um, I just hope as GMs and DMs, we all can kind of find a way to take this and bring it to our games and help us to run better games. Anyway, so that's all I've got for this week. Until next week, I'll be seeing you.